Hello, this is Araceli Garcia, and I am your ELA TOSA for secondary schools. Today, I'm going to walk you through how you can conduct either whole group or one-on-one -on -one data chats with your students. So let's begin. So I always like to start with a little bit of our goals. So the goal of this presentation is to go over uh, a little bit of the why uh, we should be doing and what the research says about this. Uh, also, just some basic terms you might want to know uh, to help uh, students understand this test. I'm going to show you what some teachers have done as, and what I have done to conduct a whole class discussion, then how you can do a variety of one-on-one -on -one chats. Uh, so that's pretty much this presentation. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is, again, this is, comes from the uh, EL Education Organization, and basically, again, students, you can empower students to take control of their learning. Um, I have done this, uh, again, I've been in this district, worked with uh, students for almost 25, 26 years, uh, and students, uh, even my own children go to this district, they want to know, well, how did I do, right? Did I improve? And so um, it, it's best when it's right after so that it's fresh in their mind. Uh, and so if you click on this link, it'll have little short videos of teachers conducting small group uh, data chats that I think are pretty effective. So I'll leave this. Again, you do have access to this presentation. Uh, all right. Uh, I think one of the best ways to start is to really couch it in a, a, a real world talk, right? That the only way we learn is if we struggle, right? If things are easy, if I'm always getting a, an easy A on assignments, then I'm not really learning. And so the important of the importance of looking at this data is to see how do we grow, right? So again, this is why this test is slightly different from uh, uh, other tests we've given in the past where students are trying to get to that 100%. And so I, you know, have this little link here to famous people that have failed multiple times and yet found success. And so that's what we really want to celebrate is that it is a test to show improvement over time. And so you can watch that on your own. All right. So let's get into some of the terms that uh, might help you in your data chats. So the first one is RIT scores. So a RIT score, as we see there, the RASH unit is basically little interval uh, scores. And if you think about it, it basically is showing where the student is ready to learn. So we call that the zone of proximal development. And an analogy I like to use is if you would ask all of your students to stand up against a wall and you would measure their height because that would, you're taking a height test, there's no way to really tell a student if they passed or not because it's not really about, you know, uh, passing. It's about growing, especially at the younger ages. Now, of course, we do have an average of where most, let's say, you know, seventh grade, right, or a 13 year old might be at on average on an average, right? And so they're comparing themselves like, how close am I to that average? So for those very anxious students that, you know, take a long time to, to answer a question, let them know some questions are going to be way harder for you. And it's okay if you don't know the answer, do the best you can and move on. Don't take too long on a question because it is adaptive test. So if a student answers correctly, it'll give them harder questions. If a student starts answering more incorrectly, it'll again lower it right until you get to that 50 percentile. All right. So that's a little bit of the RIT score. The other part that you're going to see is the growth. So now that we have two tests, the fall and the winter, students will get to see how they did. Now, remember, this year is somewhat funky because they didn't have eight weeks of instruction between the fall and the winter. Also, students didn't really know why they were taking that test. So a lot of times the scores dropped. So, you know, you want to have that conversation of, did they really try on this test? Um, again, here's another little video to help explain some of those. But what I like to see here is uh, some educators have started to call RIT scores ready for instruction today. So this website's going to show you, again, you know, where the student is at, what uh, they're ready to learn. Remember that this is a formative test, so it's not a, uh, the results are not a showing of what you have taught or how well you have taught something, but rather it's where the student is at at this point in time and what they're ready to learn. And so, you know, we don't want to use these test scores to do any gatekeeping. We don't want to use it to, you know, put students in programs, right? It's just one little snippet of a bigger picture. Uh, so that's, you know, what we have here. All right, what else do we have? Let's go ahead and uh, look at the next one. And you can What's watch that video on your own. 
All right, so how have teachers done whole group discussions? I really do believe that it's best to talk to your whole class so you can, you know, cut down on the amount of time that you're spending on one-on-one -on -one. so you're not repeating yourself. So I, uh, I recently was in a class doing a writer's workshop and we started first to with the discussion on how are we doing as a class on, with our language usage skills. So we were talking about writing. First, I was going to do this. So you don't have to have a data chat just because you're prepping them for the next SMAP test or the CAF, you can have a data chat at any time. If you're about to start a reading unit, if you're, they're about to take a big uh, final exam in your, you know, end of unit exam. So, you know, test taking skills are an ongoing process. Uh, here's uh, one that I would definitely use with the whole class. This is one I used in that class I was at. I was in an eighth grade class. Of course, I wouldn't show the names, but uh, you know, you're welcome to use this one on your own class. And I would tell them, okay, in a moment, we're going to see our whole class. So all of our eighth graders, how did we do here at this school uh, in this, uh, for this one's going to be maybe the reading assessment. Uh, actually, this was the language one here. And so I let them know the colors. And so I tell, okay, the green means, you know, that you are achieving higher than most students in the nation. And you also grew from fall to winter. So this is a great place to be at uh, here in this kind of orangey place. Uh, these are students who maybe are scoring kind of low, like we still have work to do in that area, however you grew. So I'm going to celebrate that, even if you just grew by one point or a few points. Remember that as you get older, uh, as the students get older, it's harder for them to actually increase by a lot of points. Um, again, because, you know, their skills are really growing a lot at the younger age. So if you hover or click over a student, right, you'll see a little bit of what it says here. Now, for example, this student was projected to grow uh, by five points, but they grew by six points. And that's why they have this higher, uh, you know, they're in this little zone here. Okay, this yellow group, now this is where we have a little bit of concerns because these are students who are high achievers. However, they went down on this, uh, the second assessment that they were given. Now, lots of analysis that you can do that. That's why you want to have those data chats so the student can maybe tell you a little bit, uh, hey, I was sick that day. Hey, there was something going on. My mind wasn't on it. Um, I didn't really try because I thought I was already doing well. Uh, you know, all kinds of possible ideas. So you want to let them know, hey, we want to show growth. Now, again, I want to reiterate, the assessment is set for there to be eight weeks of instruction. So we might, you know, we did hit the winter break. So there wasn't a lot of instructional time between the first assessment and the second. So the best, you know, assessment that we're going to have, uh, you know, the best data is going to be the third the, uh, spring assessment. All right. And so finally, we end with this pink group. And, uh, you know, sadly, you know, it's realistically, a lot of students are, are very behind, uh, very apathetic. And so you might have a lot of kids kind of floating down here, right, by this line down here. And these are kids who are low achieving and low growth. They might need some whole other set of things, including uh, more uh, motivational, uh, you know, kind of activities, maybe more incentives to do well, uh, maybe more recognition on the, the little things that they're doing. So maybe they're not at that reading proficiency, but they are at least trying. So these kids need something different that you and your school can really discuss. What can we do? with these kids who are checked out, mentally checked out, who don't maybe see the point of school or this subject. So again, uh, you know, a lot of resources I can give you for motivating the reluctant student. Okay, so then I would actually bring up the quadrant, right? And I wouldn't use names of your class and let the students kind of tell you, what is it that you notice class? So I love bringing them in and I'm not telling them, but they're figuring this out and they can say things like, oh, miss, oh, whoa, we have a lot of kids over here in this pink zone. Now there's a couple kids are almost there, right? And so they can start to try to figure out like, oh, wow, I wonder which one's me. And so a good, honest conversation, like, did we really try? Did we fall asleep, right? Were we not feeling well? And so what can we do for the next time that they take this test? All right, another good report that I would show is called the class report. The class report, I like it because it shows three things here. And this is, as a class, what was our RIT score? Our average RIT score was a 214. All right, well, what does that mean, class? Well, it means that you can be compared to other students in the district and other students in the nation. So are you ready to compete? Let's say you want to be a YouTube influencer, right? You need to have strong speaking skills. You need to have a strong presentation skills. Are you able to compete? 
when you leave school, leave high school for those jobs compared to other students in that nation. So let's take a look. This class got a 214. Now, the national average, there it is, grade level mean average, was a 220, right? A 220. So we have some work to do in this area of reading. But if you look at the district, the district were at 215. So this class that I was talking to, they were kind of felt, you know, not too bad because they thought that they were really low. They had really been struggling, but they saw like, hey, we're almost there. We're almost at the district average. And so then I said, okay, what area, specific area do you think we really need to work on? Let's look at the red. Oh, miss, take a look. Literary text, they tell me, right? That seems to have a lot of students in the red, very few students in the blue. I think we should target a little bit more of the literary text. Well, what does that mean? And this, uh, again, this program, if you go onto the learning continuum, it will show you what you can focus on. All right, there is a little video here that shows a teacher in action doing a data chat with the whole class. And so I would, again, begin with whole class first, get through all the terms, and then start having those one-on-ones, either while the students are working on something else or throughout you know, the week, and you can do something like that. Um, all right, what else do we have? So what would be the best reports? Again, you should at this point know how to log in. So you'd go into, you know, nwea.org. You'd go into Map Growth. Then you click on, you know, again, seeing those reports. And the ones that I would, again, really uh, look at is Student Profile and Class Report. So Student Profile and Class Report, uh, all of them are very valuable. Like I said, Learning Continuum, or if you want to kind of see where all of your class you know, mainly as that, you can look at the class breakdown, of course, your quad, right? So again, all of these are really good reports to look at. Uh, but the ones, if you're going to print these out, I would print out the student profile. Okay, let's talk about printing. So you would, you know, choose your class, choose one student, and then when you click print and share, it'll give you the option to print the entire batch. And so now you can print the entire batch. Uh, once you, you know, uh, filter down to what you specifically want, and you hit print, It'll, you, know, you have to click right here, it says go to your cues, so you can go to your report cues. Um, teachers have done something like this where they take the student profile and they put it on just uh, one page. So they put here pages per sheet, they put two, and that way, you know, you're kind of saving some paper. And of course, you could do this online and just bring the student up to the computer, show them there. Now, when you are choosing, um, you know, you choose your subject. You choose your data. Sometimes I like to include uh, the uh, CASP uh, projectiles, right? That I don't do the SAT or the ACT, just the CASP projectile. When you go to pages, I would definitely include instructional areas, and I like to be it to be grouped by standard because now I can see, and it it'll give me a chance to see, you know, click on like, okay, here's an eighth grade student, but they actually scored a little bit low. They were actually at a third grade level so I could check to see are there any standards that they're at third grade and I could print this sheet and I could say okay kid it looks like this is an area a little hole that you might have that we need to go back and review so let's put this as some of your learning goals you're going to be looking at parts of stories dramas and I want you to really look at the climax in a text and how paragraphs contribute to the meaning so these two are going to be your goals right and so maybe one assignment I might have, and this is where I love giving students choices and some student-led projects, so they are going to be writing a, a children's book. And I want them to really clearly show me the climactic part in that story, and I want them to show me how each little paragraph is moving towards a bigger meaning in that story. So two little targets, they're going to be proving that to me by this little children's book. Okay, uh, I could also print something like this out, and here's a hyperlink for you to print out the sheet. And this is where they can, you know, circle. They're going to look at just reading. And I believe uh, for some schools, I know Orange Grove said that they're going to focus on reading and math. And so you would just put in your score. I would include also the time. How long did it take your duration? And then just have them kind of answer these questions. I'm including here the Lexile score because on the student profile, they could see where their Lexile score is at. And you know, again, on average, it doesn't mean that if they're in eighth grade, but they're scoring here in, as a 420, that they should be reading books at that right at that level it just means that they're reading books at this level but with a lot more scaffolding and supports so again i don't want to be giving them readers that are very uh you know basic when they should be exposed to high level reading for their age right okay um finally 
when we talk about having students set goals, I highly recommend that they choose SMART goals that are, again, specific and measurable and so forth. So, you know, I don't want them to just say, I'm going to read more. I want them to get really specific. So I might, they might write, I'm going to read one article from the LA Times or from, you know, some magazine that they like for 20 minutes, and I will prove this. My evidence will be from a recording. I'm going to record myself reading, and then I'm going to show my mom, right? Or I'm going to sh Google share my writing assignment with a partner, and my partner is going to send me back some proofreading marks if I have any grammar errors. Or every time I send a text message, I'm going to start capitalizing my words and punctuating it and spelling things correctly, right? Or, so there's so many different things here, you know, and again, I'm adding some websites that are cool. So vocabulary.com, right, journaling topics. Uh, and I don't think you could see it down below, but uh, there's one called um, uh, Grammar Bytes, B-Y-T-E-S. It's a website that has like little daily um, kind of like grammar practices. And they're kind of fun because the students can play little games to help them with their grammar. And they're a little bit more higher uh, for older students, so not so much so elementary. Okay, so again, this is uh, that student profile that I would print out. I would point out, you know, here's your RIT score. Right here is, again, you know, the duration, right, for reading, probably the average. It was a lengthy test. So I would say about an hour's worth is, is pretty average or more. They can point out, oh, look, this is the area that I scored the lowest in. So I'm going to target this part here. If you were to take the CAPS, you are projected uh, to be right here, 51th percentile for growth and achievement. You're kind of low in achievement, so we want to work on that. And again, they can see their own Lexile down below, uh, down here, so they can do that too. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, this is a great little visual for students to look at, and they can see if they grew from the fall to the spring and this is again the national average so definitely you know some work to do for the student and you know having that conversation having those pep talks um another one if you uh, print out that instructional again uh, area you can use this for them to identify which goals they have all right so then you know if this was a live presentation i'd have you practice with maybe you know a partner where you can think about how would you have a data chat with a student. I want you to consider, you know, just different tones, different type of things you might include for the student. Um, if a student is apathetic and often off task, has low risk score and growth, maybe you have to be ready with some kind of one-on-one -on -one contract, maybe some incentives. Hey, kid, if you do better on, you know, and you don't have to wait until this SMAP. You can say if you do better on this next quiz that we're taking this Friday, right? How would you, uh, you know, do this data chat with your English learners who's working really hard, but their scores are pretty low? Again, you would talk about maybe growth. Um, and finally, how do you have a conversation with that anxious, high achieving student who wants to get 100 percent? You have to explain to them what this test uh, is really measuring. And that is really, you know, it's measuring growth and that it's not all about just getting the A, but about really learning. All right. So again, I thank you very much. My name again is Araceli Garcia. I'm always available. If you want to uh, set up a meeting one-on-one, -on -one, we can go over your scores, or we can also uh, schedule other things like some tech tools that are very powerful, such as Reading Progress or using Pear Deck or using Flip. So many online tools um, that you can bring into the classroom to get your students more engaged with the material. All right. Thank you so much. I hope that helped.